So now let's talk about Amazon GuardDD with more advanced details. Number one, you can have a multi-account strategy with GuardDD because you can manage multiple accounts from it and you have to use an organization. And the idea is that member accounts can be managed through the administrator accounts. So you send invites through GuardDuty and then the admin accounts can add and remove member accounts and they can manage GuardDuty within the associated member accounts. It can also manage any findings that GuardDuty resurfaces. It can manage suppression rules, trusted IP list and threat lists. So in an organization, you can also do something else. The administrator of GuardDuty doesn't have to be the administrator of the organization. There's the feature called the delegated administrator where a member account can become the administrator for GuardDuty. So how does that work? Well, we have an organization, maybe two OUs and member accounts, and we create and we designate a administrator account for GuardDuty, which is going to manage the GuardDuty in all the other member accounts. So we have findings in GuardDuty, and findings are potential security issues for malicious events happening in your AWS accounts. From this, you're going to be able to automate the response to some security issues by using Event Bridge. So how does that work? Well, any finding found by GuardDuty is going to be sent to Amazon Event Bridge. Now, from Amazon Event Bridge, we can do a lot of things. We can send alerts to SNS to receive email notifications or to lend the function or to Slack and so on. So for example, these are my options in here, but there's obviously way more. And from SNS, we can invoke any HTTP endpoint or send emails. Now, the events, when you are using a delegated administrator or administrator accounts, they're going to be published both in the member accounts and the administrator accounts. Now, how do we generate findings? Well, with GuardDuty, GuardDuty will directly pull independent streams of data directly from the service it reads from. So CloudTrail, it will read automatically your management events and your data events. It will read your VPC flow logs and your EKS logs. And you do not have to enable these. And if you enable GuardDuty, that doesn't mean that you will have these enabled. It just means that GuardDuty is going to get this data itself from its sources independently by using the capability within your AWS cloud. Now, each finding will have a value, for example, from 0.1 to 8 plus, and it will be categorized at high, medium, or low. And there is a naming convention. You don't have to remember it, but there is a way to name things. So the threat purpose is the primary purpose of the threat. Then the resource type affected is EC2 or S3 and so on. The family name of the threat could be related, for example, to network port unusual. And the met detection mechanism is how it got to detect this finding. Was it through TCP, UDP, and so on? And then what is being used in the malicious activities, the artifact, for example, the DNS. So you can, if you wanted to test your automations, you can generate sample findings in GuardDuty, and this will allow you to make sure that everything works as expected for a specific finding. So more concretely, let's look at some finding types. So for EC2, for example, you have unauthorized access, EC2 SSH brute force. So someone is really trying to get to your 22 port and tries to brute force it, or a cryptocurrency attack on EC2. Now for IAM finding types, we have, for example, uh, a user that disables CloudTrail logging or a user that is using the root credentials, which shouldn't be used. For Kubernetes, for example, you'll have access to an, uh, the access to credentials of Kubernetes from a malicious IP and so on. So you can have a look at, for example, suspicious files for malware protection and here successful login through an, an uh, anomalous behavior. So it's a weird login. And for S3, well, is the public access disabled? So that means that now the bucket is public, this is a problem, or is someone trying to do penetration testing onto Amazon S3? So let's talk about some architectures because now we've seen that we can automate findings. So let's take an example of an EC2 instance in a VPC. And GuardDuty is going to analyze the VPC flow logs, take it in, and then it will generate findings. And these VPC flow logs are managed by GuardDuty. So GuardDuty is going to have a finding and say, well, it looks like from the VPC flow log, someone is performing the SSH brute force type of attack on my EC2 instance. So EventBridge is going to generate an event for this. We can hook it up to SNS to get notifications by email so that the security operators know about it. But also we can use a Lambda function and that Lambda function can do two things. It can create a web ACL to block suspicious requests. This is when you use WAF attached to, for example, 
a load balancer or something. But for an EC2 instance, for example, we can also automatically update the network ACL to make sure that we block the malicious IP. Another architecture we can look at is, for example, we have a firewall subnet because we're using the AWS network firewall feature. So again, with an EC2 instance, we enable VPC flow logs to detect suspicious behavior in guard duty. And the finding is that there is a backdoor in our EC2 and there is some weird activity. So EventBridge can this time trigger a step function workflow and we can have multiple Lambda functions. Number one, making sure that is the IP of the attacker in our database of malicious IPs. If not, well, block the traffic. And by blocking traffic, maybe the Lambda function can call the Network Firewalls API to add the IP in the rule group for a firewall policy that gets applied to a Network Firewall endpoint. And as a result of this, while well, the EC2 instance, traffic will go through the firewall subnet and the EC2 instance cannot connect to the suspicious host. It is completely blocked. Now, the blocked traffic can go into you know, a success SNS topic to indicate that, yes, the IP was successfully blocked or a failure, and then maybe we need some manual intervention. GuardDuty also has the concept of trusted and threat IP lists. So this only works for public IP addresses, and you can define a trusted IP list, which is a list of IP addresses insider that you trust. In that case, GuardDuty is not going to generate findings for these trusted lists. So for example, this allows one of your developer to perform some tests on your EC2 instance without generating security findings. Now you have also a threat IP list. So it's a list of known malicious IP addresses and cyber ranges, and GuardDuty will generate findings based on these threat lists. So it can be supplied by either a third-party intelligence um, provider, or you can create them yourself custom. Therefore, a hacker trying to access your EC2 instance from a malicious IP will be detected and GuardDuty will generate a finding. Now, if you have a multi-account setup, only the GuardDuty administrator can manage those lists. So that's it for GuardDuty. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned a lot. And I will see you in the next lecture.